Hi, this is Miss Karen with Children's Liturgy for the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. And this week, we see how God's family grows. In the first reading, it's from the Old Testament and from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah was writing in a time that was scary for God's people. They had had an amazing kingdom, and then they forgot about God. And the kingdom ended up splitting up, and the, the northern part of the kingdom got taken over. And at the time of Isaiah, things weren't looking really good for the southern kingdom either. And Isaiah is reminding God's people of the covenant that God made with them and how that covenant makes them part of God's family. But God's people need to uphold their end of the bargain by acting and living in a way that glorifies God and follows God's rules. And we do that too. When we're baptized, we become part of our Catholic family with all the rights and responsibilities that come with it. Um, and it's a pretty good deal. In the second reading, it's from the New Testament in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And we hear what happens to the apostles as they're trying to set up the church after Jesus goes up to heaven. And it is a fantastic book. You will never be bored reading Acts of the Apostles and there's shipwrecks and angels and earthquakes. It's great. But if you're listening to the reading, you're hearing how Peter says that God's family is open to everyone. We're all children of God. And if you're hearing that, you probably say, well, duh, we're all children of God. That's obvious. But back at this time, when Peter lived, it wasn't obvious. It was thought that you had to be Jewish to be a child of God. And there's there's a cool story that happens right before this snippet of uh, the book that we, we hear today. And it's about Cornelius. And Cornelius was a Roman archer. He was a really good archer. Remember, Romans and Jews did not get along. But Cornelius loved God. And Cornelius ended up going to Peter and saying, look, Peter, I love God. And I know it's against God's rules for us to even be together because you're Jewish and I'm not. And it's, it's at this point that we hear where our reading is from, where Peter says, God's family is open to everyone that loves God. And after that, Cornelius is not only baptized, but he also receives the Holy Spirit. And what we see here is that we're all children of God, no matter what. In the gospel, we hear from Mark, and I love Mark. Mark is all action, and Mark does not waste words. He gets right into it. And we hear a reading from the beginning of his gospel. And we hear about John baptizing people. And imagine, you're in the desert. You see the Jordan River. It really doesn't look that different than the Monocacy does. It's a little muddy. It's not that big. It's not that deep. And you see John the Baptist in the middle of it. And he's kind of a weird looking guy wearing camel skins. He lives out in the desert. He eats locusts. He eats honey. Like he's a little rough around the edges. And you see him baptizing Jesus. And right after Jesus is baptized, a dove comes down and the heavens open and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this is the beginning of Jesus's ministry. And we were baptized too. And we probably weren't baptized in a dirty river and we were probably babies when we were baptized, though not always. But baptism is one of our Catholic sacraments that welcomes us into the church and makes us part of God's family. We get the privilege in baptism of having our sins erased and becoming a child of God. We get the responsibility to spread God's love and to live a life that glorifies God. And we also, super importantly, God gives us the grace and the sacrament so that we get help doing this job so we can get to heaven and be with him. So your assignment this week, ask your parents about your baptism. Where was it? When was it? Uh, how did they feel when they brought you up to be baptized? How'd you act? Did you sleep through it? Were you a screamer? You might hear some really neat stories. And think about ways that your parents help you with the responsibilities and privileges of being a child of God. This is Miss Karen with Children's Liturgy. Have a great week.